In recent years, the need to keep track of goods and people is growing rapidly in many fields, ranging from military, environmental and smart buildings to name a few. It is well known that the possibility of indoor localization is very limited or not possible using GPS, basically due to its poor performance given the lack of line of sight in such environments. However, the current technologies in wireless sensor networks are paving the way toward providing such localization mechanisms, but a solution that is robust enough in terms of accuracy and cost is still to be developed. In this project, we propose a hybrid localization algorithm that will attempt to improve the shortcomings of two well-known techniques, tree alteration and fingerprinting. First, we will present a quick overview of the existing localization alternatives. Then we present the proposed localization algorithm, which is based on fingerprinting and tree alteration. Then we will go over the characteristics of the network we built and the hardware we used. On the implementation section, we describe the preparation work, the network and the algorithm implementation. Then we present the test plan, followed by evaluating the results obtained and how the proposed algorithm compares to the performance of the baseline localization methods. And finally, we present remarks as conclusions. Before presenting our proposed localization algorithm, we will take a quick look to some of the existing localization methods. Localization methods can be classified in range-based and range-free. In range-based algorithms, the distance needs to be estimated first, and then a position is calculated. The distance estimation can be done using different ranging techniques, such as RSSI, Receive Signal Strength Indicator, TOA, Time of Arrival, or AOA, Angle of Arrival, to name a few. Then, the position is calculated using triangulation, trail alteration, or multilateration. In range-free algorithms, like the name implies, no ranging technique is needed. Instead, the position is estimated based on network connection information rather than the estimated distances or angles. As examples, we could mention ad hoc positioning system and approximate point in triangulation as typical range free techniques. The localization algorithm we propose is based on RSSI. The reason for choosing this is because it is more accurate in comparison with range-free techniques. It's simple because it's a feature directly read from the hardware and it's costless in terms of computation. For calculating the position, we are using a hybrid algorithm that combines tree alteration and fingerprinting and we evaluate if by combining two different methods we can improve accuracy. Tree alteration is a localization method that calculates the position based on distances from three references to a common point. A circle is drawn surrounding each reference point, and the estimated position is determined by the intersection of the circles, as shown on the figure on the left. Fingerprinting is based on the principle that any given location is subjected to specific RF characteristics. In this method, there is a setup phase in which a grid is defined and the RSSI information is manually collected and stored in a database along with the actual positions from which the samples were taken. In normal operation, a node entering the area will sense the signals received by the anchor nodes which will then be compared with the predefined database. The position is estimated based on the closest match with the database. In our network, the position calculation is performed at the computer interfacing the sync node. The main reason behind this is to keep the mobile nodes as transmitters only, without adding any computation cost, in order to save as much energy as possible. For the wireless network design, we chose to use IEEE 802.15.4 compliant NXP nodes because of their implementation simplicity and low power consumption. The network topology you use is meshed, placing the anchor nodes at the corners. The mobile node broadcasts messages to the anchor nodes, which collect a series of RSSI samples. 
Then each of the anchor nodes forward the collected data to the sync node using predefined tables. And finally, a computer interfacing a sync node is in charge of running the localization algorithm. For the network implementation, we used a 12 by 12 meter area with four anchor nodes at the corners. Since all anchor nodes are located within range of each other, the anchor nodes shown in red communicate directly with the sync node, which is shown in green at coordinate 00. However, in a larger network deployment, communication from anchor nodes to sync node would follow a multi-hole path in accordance with the mesh topology described in the network design section. During the test phase, only one mobile node was used, but it was played on multiple occasions, as described in detail in the test phase section. To create the firmware for the NXP nodes, we used the development tools provided by NXP. This includes Beyond Studio for NXP and JN51XX Programmer. It is possible that not every anchor node has direct access to the central gateway node. Additionally, one of the requirements of our application is that it has to be scalable. Based on this, we have decided to use a modified mesh topology by removing the coordinator. The network is flat and each node can speak freely to its neighbors. The advantage of this modification is that the network continues working when a coordinator is not functioning. Since the coordinator has been removed, we set up an ID in every node and assign them a unique short address manually. Four nodes powered by laptops act as anchor nodes. One of the four is chosen as sync node. The mobile node, powered by a USB battery, is carried by one of the team members. The mobile node broadcasts hello messages periodically. Each anchor node in the range of the mobile node that receives a hello message can get the RSSI of the mobile node. Then, all these anchor nodes transmit a message containing the RSSI to the sync nodes. After gathering all these messages, the sync node merges them into one message and transmits it to the laptop. The laptop then performs all distance and, cal and localization calculations. For the implementation of the algorithm, first we went through an experimentation phase to determine how to convert signal strength to actual distance. This distance estimation is the starting point for true alteration. Then we proceeded building the fingerprint database. The implementation of the algorithm is divided between anchor nodes and the computer. The data collection is done by the anchor nodes, but the localization algorithm itself is centralized at the computer, which is interfacing the sync node. Distance estimation was done using the log distance path loss model, choosing one meter as our reference D0. The data shown on the chart was collected from five different environments. We collected 1,000 samples every meter for a total of 12 meters, and the experiment was repeated at different locations. The blue ramp on the chart shows how the experimental values that were collected approximate to this model. As we can tell from the chart, the RSSI signal is not very stable, and it varies a lot depending on the environment. To construct the fingerprint database, we define a 3 by 3 grid in which each division measures 4 by 4 meters. Instead of using a single set of RSSI values on a 4 by 4 square, we divide it in 4, as shown on the left side of the picture. Then we collected samples at the center of each smaller square, represented by the green marks, and calculated the average, represented by the red mark in the middle. In this environment, four anchor nodes were used, which were installed at the corners of the area. The localization mechanism requires two steps, the data collection and the data processing. Data collection takes place at the anchor nodes. The code used at the anchor nodes was developed using NXP Beyond Studio. Every node gathers 200 samples. 
these samples are then sorted by value, and only a subset of 128 samples is used, leaving the highest and the lowest samples out. Then, the average is sent to the sync node. The sync node is responsible for collecting the data from all the anchor nodes. It awaits until the data from all anchor nodes has been received, and builds a data frame that will be sent to the computer for processing. The data processing is done by the localization algorithm, running at the computer interfacing the sync node. The algorithm compares the values received with the fingerprint database and yields the closest match. For the trilateration calculation, only the three strongest signals from the four anchor nodes are used. In the formulas shown, x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3 are the coordinates of three anchor nodes and d1, d2, d3 are the respective distances to the mobile node. This can be simplified into a linear equation system that can be solved in the form Ax equals b, resulting in less CPU computation. The final position estimation is an average of all fingerprinting and trilateration results. The localization algorithm was developed in MATLAB. To show how the algorithm works, we place a mobile node at coordinate 7,6 the purple mark. By comparing with the fingerprint database, it locates the node at the lower right corner of the grid. By trilateration, the node is located approximately at coordinates 8,7, which is the bloomer. With the hybrid algorithm, the final estimation is approximately 9,5, the green mark. To test our proposed algorithm, we place the mobile node at 11 different positions within the 12 by 12 grid. The accuracy of the calculated position versus the actual position is discussed in the performance evaluation section. Next we're going to show a short clip demonstrating how the algorithm works. On the visualization window, the square with dashed line shows the fingerprint location. The gray mark is the trilateration calculation, and the green mark is the hybrid algorithm result. The subject carrying the mobile node starts at coordinate 210 and moves to the center, coordinate 66. It remains there for a few seconds but none of the localization methods give good results with this position. Then the subject moves to coordinate 6-2. Fingerprint and trilateration locate the mobile node right on the spot. Then it moves to coordinate 10-2. Fingerprint locates it correctly, but trilateration is 4 meters out to the left. So the hybrid algorithm yields coordinate 8,2. Then it moves to position 10-10. Fingerprinting is accurate once more, and trilateration is slightly above 4 meters out. So the hybrid localization algorithm yields approximately the coordinate 8,11. For performance evaluation, we calculated the Euclidean distance from the estimated position to the actual position of 23 samples. On the chart, we show the curves of fingerprinting, trilateration, and hybrid techniques separately to get a better view on how they compare. It stands out that the trilateration curve is above the other curves in most cases, with the highest error of all, followed by the hybrid algorithm error. The orange curve, belonging to the fingerprint, turns out to be the lowest in most of the cases.
In conclusion, the performance evaluation showed that the hybrid algorithm did not yield better results than fingerprinting and trilateration combined. In fact, it was quite surprising to find out how inaccurate the trilateration results turned out to be. This was mainly caused by the high fluctuation in the RSSI measurements. According to performance evaluation, fingerprinting appears to have a very decent yield in a 5 meter accuracy requirement. However, a better test plan could be developed to further evaluate its reliability.